Okay, you're all wondering how to proceed. You've been doing the calculations of the Edison 3 wire project, and you know that you need to f do three different things in this project. Number one is you need to calculate your uh, expected current differentials from line A, line B, and the neutral for the Edison 3 wire project because the basic problem that you're doing in the Edison 3 wire is you have line 1, which is 120 volts phase A. You've got line 2, which is 120 volts phase B. And so you've got these two lines. And what is the difference between the two? The difference between these two points, the differential is 240 volts AC because the phase A is not having it the same time as the phase B. So let's assume that we have a bunch of bulbs and we have a neutral conductor. And in this case, the two neutral conductors are connected to the neutral system. And so we have five lamps Okay, so on the left we have five lamps, and on the right side we have two lamps. Now all we need to do, now these are parallel, so you could find your total resistance for all the lamps with your calculated resistance, right? And that resistance divided by 100, 120 volts divided by that resistance will give you your current, right? So that will be your current on line A. Now let me hit pause for just, let's assume that we're using a 600 ohm lamp everywhere. And since there's 600 ohms each, if we divide 600 by five, we would to find the total resistance of branch A, right? So. 120 divided by 600 is what? 120 divided by 600 is not 120. Thank you very much for the guess. Let's use a calculator. Maybe we'll get a little better answer. 0.2 amps or 200 milliamps is a better answer. 200 milliamps. Okay. So as we look at it, that's the current going down line one. Would everybody agree with that? Okay, good. Now let's look at the other side. Oh, no. Wait a minute. I know how to fix this, I think. No? No, I don't want that yet. Oh, man. Come on now. Is that what it is? No. I don't think so. No, it's... I killed it. I just don't know how. Okay, let's try that one more time now that we've redrawn it. Okay, so on the left side we have five lamps and each one of them is 600 ohms. They're all in parallel. So we can divide 600 by 5 120 ohms is our total resistance for branch A. Now, if we've got 120 volts and 120 ohms, our current would be 1 amp. Okay, that's different. I did something wrong a minute ago, 1 amp. And I think we were forgetting to divide the resistance of 1 by the number of them because they're in parallel. Now, we have 2 on the right side. And there's still 600 ohms. Since there's two of them, we're going to divide by two. They're in parallel, so we have 300 ohms total resistance, right? So if we divide 120 volts by 300 ohms, 120 divided by 300, we're going to get a small current, 400 milliamps. Okay. Okay, so if we have one amp 
going down line one, and we have 400 milliamps going down line two. The difference is what? Is 600 milliamps. So what is going to come up the neutral? 600 milliamps. And you're going to do that kind of a calculation for 5 and 1, 5 and 2, 5 and 3, 5 and 4, 5 and 5. And did I say 5 and 0? Do, do, do calculate 5 and 0. You might not want to read it. Nah, that's okay to read it. We'll try it. Maybe we'll blow some stuff up, hopefully. And uh, so that is your first pro part of your problem. And you do that for, again, 5 and 0, 5 and 1, 5 and 2, 5 and 3, 5 and 4, 5 and 5. So you're going to have, what, six calculations for neutral close. This The neutral is connected, right? Okay, so that's the first part of the problem. And if we look at these instructions that are on the... Now, we're looking at the website, right? We're, this is the website for this class. And if we look at the instructions where we would click on that, it would tell you that to get 120 volts from two different receptacles, you're going to find you have to find one receptacle that's got phase A, 120. And you have to find phase B, 120 someplace else, and take two cords and bring them to your board and make sure that your hot is on the outside of both and your two neutrals go together in the middle okay because it, otherwise you might create a short circuit across 240 volts we don't want to do that so read these instructions before you go any farther they're on the website and they're about how to find 240 volts in the lab basically okay now let's go back and that's part one. Part two, that's the neutral closed. Part two is where you're going to look at the neutral open. Yes, open that. Okay. And it's kind of the same thing, except that we're not going to have a new, we're going to break the connection. It's going to be more or less the same. Only different. <laughs> okay, let me pause for just a sec. Okay, now we have a similar wiring diagram where we have five on the left side and two on the right, except the difference is the neutral is tying phase A lamps to phase B lamps through the neutral, but it's not connected to the power supply system so the only thing the neutral is doing is tying the lamps of phase A to the lamps of phase B. Are we clear on that? So this neutral is broken. There's a switch on the board where we're going to have both our neutrals connected to the supply, and then we're going to open that switch. Now, when we do that, when we're testing, we only open that switch for one second. That's long enough for your meter to get the voltage reading because we're not reading current this time. We're reading voltage differentials. Now, when you do this, your calculations are going to be a two or three parts process of finding your totals because what you want to find is your voltage drops across the left side and your voltage drop across the right side. Because what we have just created by opening the neutral is a combination circuit supplied by 240 volts from our phase A and phase B 120. So our voltage across A to B is 240 volts. So our voltage across this combination circuit is 240 volts. So the first step we need to do when we're doing our calculations, is we need to look at this branch. Now let's say that we have 600 ohms again. And our phase A equivalent resistance resistor would be 600 divided by 5, which would be how many ohms? 120 ohms. Now that's connected through the neutrals to our phase B lights. And our phase B resistance for two lamps is 600 divided by 2 or 300 ohms. So our res equivalent resistor would be 300 ohms. Then... We're going to look at our total resistance of one equivalent 
single resistor, which represents the whole entire totals. So now we can see that that is 420 ohms total resistance. And our voltage supplied is 240 volts. So we can so see that our current is going to be 240 divided by 430, which is... I've got to pause. Let me fix that, too. What is it? Point five seven five four. Is that right? Five seven one four. Is that right? Okay. Why is it not? Oh, it just kept going. I miss hitting the stop button. Okay. So we have a total current for our total single resistance is 571.4 milliamps. Okay? So if we take that back down to here, we know that the current in this series equivalent resistance circuit is 0.5714 amps. And we can multiply that times 120 ohms, and that will give us our voltage drop across phase A. And what is that? That number times 120. Say again. Okay, so that's 68.57 volts. Now, 300 times 0.57414 would be what? Yeah, about 160, but exactly what is it? 152, 151.3 volts. Now we notice that if we add those two up, we'll get about 240 volts, right? Okay. So we can see that the voltage drop across each one of these bulbs on the left is 68, almost 69 volts. And the ones on the right, 171 volts. And that's what we want to show in our calculations. And then when we do the testing, we're going to hook our meter up on one of the lamps on phase A in parallel, open the neutral, and read our voltage drop across that. And then clo open, then close the neutral back up after one second or as soon as you get your reading. Do the same thing on the right, and you should see somewhere about 171.4 volts. Now, a normal 120-volt bulb is not going to like 171 volts very much, right? How much is it going to like 240 volts? Okay, so when we get down to 5 and 1, or 5 and 0, the 1 is not going to like it very much, right? So we don't want to test 5 and 1. I want to tell you right now, do not test 5 and 1. Do not check the voltage on 5 and 1, because the 1 is going to have almost 240 volts across a 120-volt bulb. And it may just blow out and go black immediately. If it does not do that, it may come apart and come up and touch you. We want to avoid that, not that it's not entertaining, because we do kind of applaud that a lot when it does happen, because anytime you blow stuff up, we're all going to applaud. Be warned now, and uh, we might have a good laugh at your expense, and that's okay, too. And so remember, don't test 5 and 1. That's the only thing we do not test. You can test 5 and 0. What happens if we have nothing on this side. What does that look like as a circuit? That's an open circuit. Is that going to work? Not going to work. You can try it, and if you tell me that you have a voltage on the left, I know that you're lying. <laughs> you didn't test it if you say that. There's a lot of things you're going to come up and tell me, and I'm going to stop immediately and say, no, you lie. Go sit down. 
That's because you've just told me something like, well, I got 240 volts on the left side and no volts on the right. Yeah, right. Checks the mail. Love you forever. And you got 240 and zero. Uh-huh. Yeah. Nope. Okay. So anyway, so then the final part, which I actually want you to do first, okay? I want you to take a single bulb. And if you're going to try and use bulbs that you have never seen before, you might need to do this with all of them. But if you want to know the real resistance of a bulb, can you take a bulb and take your meter and read the resistance across the two connections? You're shaking your head up and down. That's absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. That will tell you the cold resistance of a lamp, which is absolutely completely unrelated to the hot resistance. The elements are not hot because the electrons are not flowing, so you can't tell what the real resistance of that lamp is. You might actually get 600 ohms if you read it that way. But when you heat it up, can you read the, the uh, resistance then? You can never connect your ohm meter to an energized circuit, right? That's one of the safety rules. Do not do that. <clears throat> what do we do? We can infer the resistance by reading the actual real voltage drop across the lamp. <coughs> Pardon me. Assuming you're reading somewhere around 120 volts, use the number of actual volts you're actually flowing across the, a single lamp. And then put your ammeter in line in that circuit and read the current through there. If you divide the voltage, actual voltage of a lamp by the actual current of the lamp, what will you find? The real resistance, the hot resistance, and it will be totally different from what you read cold. And I want you to do both. Okay? I want you to do both. I want you to read it cold and write it down. Cold resistance of a bulb. Write it on your calculation sheet. Then inferred current flow I mean, incurred resistance, <laughs> incurred for it. Sorry. One more time. The inferred resistance of a hot lamp. And just write that down, inferred resistance of hot lamp. And you show the actual voltage and the actual current flow and divide the two. And that will give you your real resistance of a bulb. Now, if you're using a bunch of mismatched bulbs, you might need to do that because if your lamps over here on the left are different resistances than the ones on the right, it's really going to mess you up trying to get a balanced circuit when you're trying to do 5 and 5, right? Because 5 and 5, you should have 120, 120, right? If there are different results, different, uh, different resistances, you're going to get different results, not the results you're looking for, okay? All right, I think that's enough talk about this project, I hope. And that if you're confused, you can watch this again. Look on the website for the two sets of instructions about the two parts and how to find uh, 240 volts. You need two lab power cords. And that ought to take care of it.